Hi everyone, Henry here. In this video, we're going to be learning how to create HTTP requests with Power Automate. Now, HTTP requests are used to communicate, to transfer data, but it should not be your first solution. Your first solution should always be to look for a connector for your application. A connector is a Power Automate way to communicate with another application. Power Automate already has thousands of connectors available to you. So for example, if you need to automate something related to a Microsoft application, like Teams, SharePoint, OneDrive, or other applications that have connectors, like Dropbox, SAP, so on and so forth, you should always use the connector approach, not the HTTP requests approach. If there's not a connector for it though, then you can use HTTP. So, HTTP requests are used by Power Automate to communicate with another application that doesn't have a connector, but might have what's called a REST API. So basically the application developer has exposed the application uh, in that people can make requests to it and it can return data to those requests. So the example I've seen here is an internally built CRM software that a client has. They definitely don't wanna make a connector for it for Power Automate, so instead, they allow HTTP requests from various sources that can ping the CRM software, for example, for a list of customers, and that list of customers will then be returned by that HTTP request. That's the example that we'll be following. Last but not least, if there is no HTTP requests either, then you have to use something called desktop flows. We won't be going through that in this video, but desktop flows are very powerful in the sense that they allow you to automate almost anything. Very similar to an Excel macro where you can record, do some action, and then repeat it, you can do something very similar to desktop flows. I've only seen this if people want to automate things that are only in their desktop, like moving files around in their desktop, or opening up an application that's only available to them and doing you know, uh, certain things with it, for example. Okay. Now that we have all that set, let's go into an HTTP workflow and see how it works. Okay, so I have my Power Automate open and I already have open the actual tutorial for the REST API over here. Now what I'm going to be using as the HTTP request example is a website over here that I have access to that again has an API where I can tell the API to give me a list of users in page two, for example. Let's change that to page one. So this is the list of uh, emails or customers that we have in our company. Now, again, this is an API that this application developer in Requis has actually given me access to. Now, the, I made an HTTP request over here and it returned to me the actual JSON, okay? I can copy that JSON into what's called a pretty print. Let me just put this guy in here and click make pretty. So we can see what it actually looks like. We can see on the right hand side that we're given page per page, how many customers there are, total, total pages, as well as for each ID, we get the email, first name, last name, and their avatar. So we get a lot of information. Uh, we basically get six customers from this API that we've created. Now, what we wanna be able to do is have a flow that runs, for example, every morning that basically sends us this list of customers in page one. Because perhaps page one lists the amount of the customers that are new customers, and we want to be privy to that. Okay, so that's our workflow example. So what I've done over here is I first started off by making a trigger, a manual trigger to the flow, but we can again change this to a reoccurring flow. Right now this flow will only run when I click a button, but we can make it so that this flow instead runs every morning. We can even do more fancy things like every second day in morning or something like that. Right now, again, it's just a manual trigger because I wanna test it. We then have a connector that Power Automate has called the HTTP connector. What you give the HTTP connector is the method. There are two methods that are really applicable to APIs, right? Uh, get or post. They're also put patch and delete, but those are rarely used. If you want to get information from an API, it's usually either get or post. Now, this isn't an API deep dive course, but if you are interested in what the difference between get and post are, then I really recommend you to Google RESTful APIs, and there's a really good explanation for that. 
In any case, our application has developer has told us that he's going to uh, make APIs that accept get requests. So that's why we have get as the method. We then need the URI. Uh, right here, we want page one. So it's the same link as if I put it over here. So I'm going to change this to page one. And then what you can also give this API is you can give it a body. So you can tell the API, for example, let's say if I only want customers that begin with the letter F. The application developer might have a property uh, that says you know something like first letter, and if that property is filled in, they will only return me customers that start with that letter. So you can add in arguments or parameters to your HTTP request that the application developer's API then takes in and then spits out a different response based on that property. Okay, for now though, we're keeping it simple. We're not going to have any sort of uh, any sort of body queries or anything like that. Okay. Now that we have, now that we've made this request, we can we actually need to output it. So what what I've done over here is I've created a chat to uh, Brad Pitt, who's the uh, the fake manager of my company, uh, with the title of test because again we're just testing this out. And what we're going to do is we're going to post this message to that conversation. So we're going to post the body, which is the output of this HTTP request to this conversation. Now, this is dynamic content. So, you know, I'm going to exit out of this, but if I click it, I can see over here, add dynamic content. And I can see that HTTP, this connector or action over here, returns me a body. So what this will return is exactly what I see over here. It's a bunch of mumbo jumbo, right? It's, a mu it's basically a JSON file. However, the JSON file is not really readable. I mean, it's great that, I, that Brad Pitt got it, but he won't be able to understand it or know what it means. So instead, what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to parse through that JSON file. Now, what the parse JSON connector allows you to do is it, you basically give it a JSON object or a JSON file like this, and it gives you back a JSON object or it gives you back a, uh, a way to cycle through these customers a lot easier. So I've given this connector the body, again, which is the output of the HTTP request. And this connector will give me back access to things like ID and email, first name and last name. So instead of me having to go through and parse it, you know, basically, if I wanted to do this myself, I'd have to go to, okay, see where first last name is, take the two spaces after the colon, after the first name, um, and then give me back this and remove the quotes, and then that's George. I don't have to do that. I don't have to make it this complicated. Power Automate does that for me because of this really cool connector. Okay? We then over here have an apply to each, because what we want to be able to do is for each customer that we have, that we receive in that body, we want to output perhaps the first name, last name, and the email. Okay? So we have an apply to each uh, control connector over here. And in the apply to each, we post a message to uh, basically that same conversation that we had started over here with Brad Pitt. So over here, we say post as flowbot, post in. Uh, recipient is uh, Brad Pitt. And over here in the email, right now we're only opening the email, but see over here, now we have access to first name, last name, avatar URL, te uh, text, email. We would not have access to these actual elements if we did not uh, you know, have this parse JSON. So this parse JSON is very important because instead of just outputting a body, we can actually output the first name, last name, and so on and so forth. So over here, I want to output the first name, space, last name, space, and the email. Okay. Let me just go back over here. So that is our entire flow. Uh, again, right now it's mainly triggered. It makes an HTTP request, which is a get request over here to this URL, uh, which will basically return me this, which then I output to a Teams chat so we can take a look at it. But we don't stop there. We then parse through that JSON file 
and then we send a message for each customer and for each customer we actually the message that's sent is actually their first name last name and email okay perfect let's watch this workflow in action so what i'm going to do over here is i'm going to click save Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. And then I'll click test. I'll click manually, click test. And now it should be going through that process of making the HTTP request and actually returning that, uh, that request and sending it out on Teams. So let's see if it works. Your flow is running, perfect. Okay, so it's made the HTTP request. Now it's creating the chat. And now it's posted. Uh, you can see I've gotten a little message over here. Um, we can see that just today we have received at 4.31 p.m., which is the time right now, the actual uh, list of customers. And we can see for each customer, we get their first name, their last name, as well as the, um, their email too. Okay, we get six customers and this should correspond exactly to what we have over here which we've prettied over here. So here we see George Bluth, then Janet Weaver, then Emma Wong. If we go to Teams, you should see George Bluth, Janet Weaver, Emma Wong, perfect. And obviously we also have the actual full JSON message that we've received, but I mean, we've just done it as a test. Obviously this is very hard to read. <laughs> this over here is a lot easier to read than that. So. I see people making HTTP requests all the time and getting the data back to them, but obviously it's worth it to parse through the data as well, especially if the receipt of the data is in JSON form, because you want to parse through the JSON file and actually make it something you can use. So this is an example of us taking an HTTP request, sending out a request and receiving data. But one thing I do want to specify is that you can also make HTTP requests to do anything. So for example, our application developer for a request, they could have made a HTTP endpoint that instead of returning customers, uh, perhaps created a new customer in their CRM software. We can make a flow for that as well, where maybe if someone adds in a customer to SharePoint, the flow gets triggered, and then the information is passed to an HTTP request with the properties being something like first name equals X, last name equals Y, so on and so forth. So that's how you can transfer information from SharePoint, for example, to your third-party application that accepts API requests. And there we go. That's HTTP requests in a nutshell. Um, let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below. Thank you so much. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best, take care.